This is Weekend Winners, proudly brought to you by One Eek One. We focus on Albion Park. We've got a 10 event program coming through on Saturday night, and we start at 5.46. The highlight for mine is the free-for-all. It's late in the program. It's race nine. Black Sedans, he owns the track record. A thumping victory last week. Can he do it again? Can he make it three on the bounce? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But that, for mine, is the highlight. He goes up against the former New Zealand Cup winner, Cruz Bramack, who is drawn to the inside of Black Sedance. In this edition of Weekend Winners, I'm going to chat with Adam Sanderson and Chris Geary. Adam Sanderson now joins us to go through his book of drives on Saturday night. He's got a uh, pretty strong book as well. He joins us. He's in the hot seat. Adam, appreciate the time. No worries, mate. Uh, let's start with race one, your number one Copperfield. This looks an ideal race for him. Has he got the speed to lead? Yeah, he does. Yeah, um, if, if he's um, revved up on the night, um, you know, he, he's got as much gate speed as any, so he can lead. And, um, you know, depending on pressure, if he wants to lead, he can. If he takes a sit, he can. So... Uh, we'll just play it by ear. Okay, so at this stage, which way are you sort of leaning? Are you more towards holding the front or depending uh, if the right horse comes, you'd, you'd be happy to trail? Yeah, uh, I sort of, oh, as I said, I'll just play it by ear, but uh, it wouldn't worry me to lead. He, he does race good in front and, um, you know, it's just a matter of pressure and, and if it comes or not. Okay, four starts ago, he was victorious. He hasn't had much luck since. No, nah, he's sort of one of those horses. He, he, he never draws good and, um, you know, when he does draw good, he, he seems to earn money, so um, hopefully that's the case Saturday night. Okay. Is this a winnable race? How do you uh, assess the, 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 the quality of opposition? I, I think it's quite even field, actually, but um, on his day, he's got as, as much ability as, as the rest of the field, so um, you know it's just going to be, as, as I said, that pressure and, and the luck that he gets. Okay. If you do hold the front, how concerned would you be having a horse like the Grogfather on your back? Uh, yeah, well, it's... it's yeah, never ideal having everyone cold sit on you, but um, you know it's it's racing good and, and it's probably one of the ones to beat. But you know it wouldn't worry me either way. Okay, well that's Copperfield race one number one, uh, race two again for Ian Gurney. You're driving Captain Kirk now. He's on the back up from Tuesday. He had absolutely zero luck on Tuesday. Yeah, no, he could he couldn't find a spot early and um, you know had to go back you know all the way back and then up the fence and. Um, Probably finished as good as any, so I was real happy with that run. But um, you know, Saturday's a step up, and he's probably a little bit outclassed. Okay, so gate three, uh, do you just sort of grab up early, or do you sort of run the gate like you did on Tuesday a little bit? Yeah, he's sort of he's got enough gate speed. You know, he's sort of got enough to get himself in trouble sometimes. But he, he'll sort of just roll out on his own steam, and then we'll just see where he ends up. Okay, is Aphorism the horse to beat? Is he the class horse in this field? Yeah, it's certainly a drop back for him, but um, you know, he's not racing that great, so. Um, there's a number of runners, you know, Mr. Freeze, and, and, and they sort of get into this race quite well. So um, we'll just be looking for luck, and um, if we get it, we get it. Yeah, just like that opening race, it looks fairly open there, race number two. So Captain Kirk, your drive there, race three, again, Ian Gurney, much better. This guy's back in form. He's been good his past couple of starts now. Yeah, he's racing well. Um, you know, he seems to be in a, in a good frame of mind. So, um, you know, he's, he's getting that luck, and he's finishing off well. So he's... Um, He's going to be needing it on Saturday. Yeah, the draw stings, doesn't it? Drawn out six over a mile and you've got power drawn to your inside. Yeah, it's quite a good field, that. So, um, you know, we'll just be looking after him and um, hopefully you're hitting the line. Is Tizza Sizzler the horse to beat there from the inside gate? Yeah, he looks like um, he looks like he should lead and, and be hard to beat. OK, well, you know him well, Tizza Sizzler, but much better. If luck goes his way, he can certainly run top three. Yeah, he's, he's probably going to be a little bit far back, but we'll top five and we'll be more than happy. All right, you sit out race four, race five for the mares. Only one's bitten. Is this your first time sitting behind this mare? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, um, Tim sort of texted me earlier this morning, said he put me down. So, um, you know, it's a nice one to pick up and, you know, happy for happy to get the drive. OK, these mares races, they're never easy. How do you sort of sum up this race? Uh, I haven't actually had a great look at it. You know, I only, only sort of knew I was driving it this morning, so... Um, We'll just play it by ear and, and, and be guided what Tim says, but, you know, they're always an even lot, so it's um, it's usually just who sort of gets a better run on the night. OK, she's quite a tough mare, so from gate three, do you want to stay fairly handy? Yeah, that'd be ideal. Um, she, she looks like she has got ability on her day, so, um, yeah, as I said, it's just a, a matter of um, who gets the best run. All right, let's go across to race nine. This is the Open. Cruz Bramack is your drive, the former New Zealand Cup winner. He was first up when second. He was tremendous that night. Yeah, real happy with him, you know, he, he had a nice trial leading into it and he was probably still just that little bit undone, underdone on, on the night, but, um, you know, he got out of the gate good and, and raced good. He got a little bit keen in front, but, um, you know, we got beat by a better one on the night, but um, he should be better for that. Mm. Did his gate speed surprise you in any way, shape or form? You lit him up from seven and he crossed quite comfortably. 
Oh, no, I've sort of, well, obviously being a horse like that, um, you sort of take notice of him, you know, throughout the years, and he's, he's always sort of had that real high gate speed, you know, it, it didn't surprise me, no. Okay. You've probably got the speed to easily cross feeling for a rainbow. Do you hold the lead over a mile, or do you hand over to the informed black sedans who's chasing three on the bounce? Uh, I haven't had a good chance to, um, you know, talk to Shannon or Scott, so um, I'll be sort of guided by what they say Saturday, but... Um, you know that he seems to race quite good in front, and you know he, he's got the gate speed to lead and, and lead quite comfortably. So, um, whatever they sort of want, you know, I'll just sort of be dictated to. But if it, if it was your decision, you'd, you'd be happy to hold. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, Blacks and Dance is racing good, but you know, to um, sort of run a, a tough mile sitting outside him, um, I think he's, he's as good in front. So, um, yeah, it's sort of going to be. You know, one of those things we play by ear, but um, you know, I'd be more than happy to lead. Okay, and how much improvement do you reckon there'll be from that first up run to Saturday night? Oh, you'd think um, you know it's been a couple of weeks. He had a bit of chance to get over that run, and um, you know they're they're pretty happy with him. So um, you know, he's going to have to be 100 percent to um, sort of run the times that Black Sedan has been running. But um, you know, he's, we we all know he's capable. He's won a million dollars for a reason. Mm, he's a good horse. There's no question about that. That's a good race. And the last race ten. This is the trot. Mobile start conditions. You've picked up the drive on stress factor. He lands gate three. Can you use him early? Uh, he sort of got out okay. Um, you know, last start, but 2100, he, he can sort of fire up a little bit, and you know, sort of reluctant, reluctant to use him out of the gate. So um, might just uh, let him flop out and, and sort of find a spot. And uh, he's on his last run. He sort of needs to he needs to step up a little bit. Pretty tidy field though, this one, isn't it? It is. The trotters are sort of you know they they're getting stronger and stronger in Queensland. Um, each week they they um, the fields are getting stronger. So um, you know, it's definitely an even lot. Okay, the pick of your drives for Saturday night. Uh, I thought Copperfield probably is the best chance, but, you know, that, that free-for-all is going to be a good spectacle, I think. OK, race one, number one, Copperfield. Race nine, number two, Cruz Bromac. Adam, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. No worries. Thanks, mate. Chris Geary now joins us to go through his drives ahead of Saturday night's program, and he's got quite a few to get through. Chris, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Bomb suit is your first drive. Race one, number three. This is your first drive behind this guy. Yeah, um, I was sort of, I was trying to think then, I wasn't sure if I'd driven him in Sydney previous or not, but I probably haven't, um, but I know quite a fair bit about the horse. Okay, this is a very open race to start the card on Saturday night. His form reads as good as any there, he just needs that little bit of luck. Yeah, definitely, he's sort of a bit of a funny horse, um, you know, he follows speed really well, but um, sort of sometimes can make it hard on himself to win, but like you said, his numbers are, are really well and... Um, yeah, probably a handy enough draw for him. Hopefully he'll be able to find himself in a good spot. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the draw because gate three, it can be a little sticky at times because you've either got to commit and go hard looking for the lead or if you grab up, you're going to end up a long way back. So how do you see it here on paper, uh, gate three with Bomsu? Yeah, I think the, the, probably the two inside him, they're not brilliant beginners, but they're probably, fair to say, they're probably equally as quick as him. So... Um, probably just have to wait and see sort of what the connections want to do with him but personally I'd probably be happy to sort of come out hard for 100 and, and try and find a spot and just you know see what's going to play out. Okay well that's bomb suit he, he certainly has some sort of claims there in that opening race. Race two you're driving Mosem down is this your first drive behind Mosem down? Yeah I'm pretty sure it is yep. Okay he looks well placed here because he's a gate speed horse drawn the front row and his form looks pretty solid on paper. Yeah, definitely. I think he's sort of one of those, probably like a few in that race, you know, they're honest old horses and, um, you know, when they pop up in races like this, they're always very competitive. And like I said, I think there's a fair bit of speed around him, but, um, you know, he runs probably his best races in front and um, I dare say he'll be trying to do the same. OK. Aphorism's one of the class horses, but he's really down on form, but he gets his chance to improve. The other two that look well graded here are the stable mates of Mosem down, Mr Freeze, but he's got gauge seven, and Sam is perfection, who's got the outside of the second row. So they're all going to require that little bit of luck themselves. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, there's a few horses in the race that probably have been running better races than their numbers probably read, but... Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be tricky, but, you know, if he can sort of find the front and get a bit of a march on him, um, he'll make it hard for him. Would you prefer this race at a mile compared to the 2100? Uh, probably more than likely. It probably gives a few of those horses a chance to work into the race at some point, but, um, you know, if, if we can sort of be handy and even, or if not, even find the front and just 
sort of get that first lap pretty comfortable. Um, I think he'll take some running down. Okay, looks a good chance there. Mows him down. That's race number two. Race number three on Saturday night. Perfect cut. You know this guy. You've had a couple of drives behind him. Last time out, you drove him. He was fourth. How did you grade that effort? Um, I think uh, both Jack and myself, we sort of thought um, he was fair. Um, he sort of looked, loomed right into the race around the turn and just didn't finish off quite that well. But in saying that, um, he'd probably been away from the races for a few weeks there and probably just needed the run a bit. So um, probably expect a, a bit better performance this week. Tizza Sizzler's drawn one, likely to run favourite. Are you any chance of heading him at the start? Um, he probably could. Um, we'll just have to weigh it up and see what happens. I sort of got half a plan there, but um, we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, but you give him a, a shot here from the good draw? Yeah, w with a nice run. Um, he's got to be thereabouts. He's, his form prior to um, a little freshen up there was, was really strong and he'd run some really good races. So um, with natural improvement off his run last week, he, uh, he, he'll be thereabouts. Okay, his winning form at Albion Park is when he's in front, but he doesn't have to lead to win. No, definitely. Um, you know, he's just got to hope for a bit of tempo on the right road. Okay, race five. This kicks off the quaddy on Saturday night. A race for the mares, and you know this horse well, parked in heaven. It's only a matter of time before she uh, picks off one of these races at the creek. Well, hopefully it's this one, because we sort of waited for this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, we sort of opted to leave her out last week and, and set her for this week. So, um, yeah, her work's been super. Um, you know, I really love this little mare, and um, she's probably got a, a big few months coming up with the Breeders' Challenge and that, so um, she's probably going to have to put her best foot forward and hopefully it's this week. Okay, well good money up for grabs with this race as well. From gate five, are you committed to go forward? Yeah, definitely. She's um, She's got really good gate speed. Um, not sure if she crosses or could work her way to the front, but um, yeah, I'd be happy to sit parked. Okay, she is tough though, isn't she? She is, yeah. She, um, she sort of naturally always thought she was a lot faster than she was strong, but she's sort of yet to really just let down and put them away. Um, which we sort of, we know it's there, but um, she's only lightly raced and still very green. But, um, you know, when she puts it all together, um, I think she'd be a really nice horse. Okay, but she is confirmed to go back to Sydney for a shot at the Breeders' Challenge? Yes, uh, I think it's the 15th of October, the, the semi-finals. Okay, well, that's parked in heaven, a terrific chance, race five. In race six, you're driving the Pooh Bar and he's drawn out in gate six. How do you rate his chances here? Yeah, he's been a little bit disappointing um, since coming up. He's had a few little issues and sort of been working hard to try and iron them out and um, you know just opted that um, he's he's the same he'll head back to Sydney for the challenge so we thought we'd give him his opportunity at a, a, at a quali before he sort of headed home but um, yeah hopefully we got a few of those issues sorted out and um, we'd hope a much improved run anyway. Okay it's obviously been frustrating because when he first arrived it, it started well but yeah obviously those little issues have cropped up and it's just uh, thwarted his campaign of late. Yeah, definitely. He's sort of he's a funny horse. He um, yeah, he's got his fair share of issues, but um, you know, he does a good job to sort of do what he does. But um, yeah, just like to see him sort of somewhere back near his his better form, and I'm sure he'd be more than competitive. Okay, race number seven. This is another one for the mares. This is a good quality mares race as well. Mammals Magic, your drive. She's drawn two off the second row. Any expectations? Um, actually, I think she'll improve a lot um, on her last few runs. He sort of. Probably just her getting on a bit and sort of being a bit of an old favourite. Might have been a bit too kind to her and, um, you know, just really stuck a bit of work into her of late. And, um, yeah, hopefully they sort of run along a pretty genuine race and I think she'll improve a lot. OK, so she is going better than what the numbers suggest? I think so, yeah. Like I said, it was probably just a bit too kind to her and um, she's sort of getting towards the end of her racing career and just trying to sort of probably been too nice to her. But, um, yeah, like I said, we've sort of really tried to um, put a bit of work into her and sharpen her up. So, um, yeah, I think that she'll run a really good race. OK. The last race, so we've got you there all night on Saturday night, but this is probably your most interesting drive. Humble lad, he's now under the care of Jack Butler. We've seen this guy here previously, came up for uh, last year's Tab Constellations. He's a high-quality trotter. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I was down in Sydney with Luke and Belinda McCarthy when he was there. Um, competing through the Inner Dominion series and um, always showed a lot of ability. Um, he's probably the same. I think he's had a few little issues that taken a bit of sorting out. But um, yeah, if he's uh, 
anywhere near right, um, I'm sure uh, they'll know he's there. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that he competed during the Inter Dominion because he did go well during that series in Sydney last year, the series won by Maori Law. So under these conditions, a mobile start, 2,138 metres, he does look very well graded here. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, and, and no disrespect to any of the other runners in that race, but, um, you know, if sort of the right one of him turns up, he'd, he'd probably have a little bit of class on them. Yeah, he hasn't trialled, so he goes into this race fresh up. Yeah, um, yeah, I think Jack's been pretty happy with his work, and although he might, you know, he might need the run, but um, hopefully that class carries him a long way. Okay, the, the locals that are competing against Humble Lad, they're in form. King of the North has won three of his last five. Sir Fahrenheit's the reigning trotter of the year. Father Christmas in good form. The stable made. Red Castleton more than handy. G up Nettie's come back well. Kingdom come racing well. So. It should be a competitive race. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, a um, number of those horses have been racing super and um, week in, week out too, which you know probably gives them a little bit of an edge on him. But um, yeah, we just you know got to kind of hope for a good run there. And um, yeah, I'm sure whatever he does this Saturday, he'll improve going forward. Okay, a uh, couple of good drives there, a couple of sticky barrier draws as well. Which one are you most looking forward to? I'm used to the sticky draws, Chris. Um, <laughs> Um, probably parked in heaven, not sort of expecting sort of big things from her. Um, you know, she's a very honest little thing and just hope that she sort of really puts it all together sometime soon and a um, couple of gear changes this week, just hopefully it's this week. Okay, race five, number five, parked in heaven. Chris, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. No worries, thank you. A big thanks to both Adam and Chris giving up their time and insights ahead of their drives on Saturday night. As I said, it's a really good card. I think the best bet comes up nice and early. Race three, number one, Tizza Sizzler. He's a very talented type. He's drawn ideally here. He's the horse they have to run down. So I'm marking him as the best bet. Race three, number one, Tizza Sizzler. Repeating 10 events, we start at 5.46. Remember, if you are gambling this weekend, you know the score. Stay in control, gamble responsibly. We'll see you trackside at the creek on Saturday night.